Hi, it's Chris. I've been using 3D scanners at work for probably 20 plus years, a lot of very high-end systems. And when I saw this pop scanner come out that had a lot of the features of some of the better systems, I thought I'd give it a try. My interest is in reverse engineering mechanical systems, not so much artwork. So let's see what we can get out of it. I ordered my pop 3D scanner from the RevelPoint homepage and it took about 11 days for it to arrive here in upstate New York. When the uh, turntable arrived it was the on off switch was broken so they uh, I contacted them and they quickly sent me a replacement so their customer service was pretty good. The pop 3D scanner has two IR sensors to triangulate and it has a IR projector that puts a pattern on the object to be scanned and then it has a color camera that collects data for the texture map. It's a nice small lightweight package and it hooks up to the USB port of your computer. Unfortunately I can't use it in target mode with my iPhone because the Wi-Fi doesn't have enough bandwidth so in freehand mode using targets I have to use my laptop. I've set up a piece of paper to scan and I moved the camera until it just came into the excellent range. So the field of view is 120 by 95 millimeters and that's at 210 millimeters away. I took a single scan of the paper and I'm going to export the points so that I can look at the grid spacing. I loaded the point cloud in and I'm doing some quick distance measurements between points in the grid. And it looks like it's averaging between 0.5 and 0.6 millimeters. So any features smaller than this, you won't be able to resolve. The spec page says that the single capture accuracy is up to 0.3 millimeters. The best way to check accuracy of a scanner is to scan some known parts that are traceable to a standard. And here we have uh, a step block, another step block with a finer detail. We got a 321 block and we have a billiard ball. Here's a standard artifact. It's a 321 block. It's good for measuring accuracy. When we put the 321 block on the turntable, you can see that it's not getting any return, probably because it's too shiny. Magnaflux spot check is great stuff to make something that's reflective. Uh, very white. It puts an extremely thin white layer down like talcum powder. When it dries it turns white. You can see it's put a very fine coat of white down and it will wash off with water. We've got the 321 block covered with Magnaflux now so it will get a better uh, scan return. It's on the turntable and we've got a black sheet underneath the turntable so it doesn't get return data from the table. And you can see we're getting pretty good scan data over here on the view. I have found with geometric objects that the feature based scans don't work all that great. So you can go in and use the marker feature. So it's using the markers on the turntable to get its orientation and then we can see, you'll see they show up here as red dots and we can go ahead and scan it three two one it's going to start scanning Once we've been all the way around, we can stop it. Complete. It's going to fuse the points together. We can create a mesh. I'm not going to fill holes. and we can export the model. This 
Save it out as an STL. Done. Here's the 3D scan of the 321 block. It had a little bit more trouble with the edges around the holes. But I fit it to the solid model of it. And if we look at the uh, quality of the fit, you can see the scale is set to the plus or minus 0.3 millimeter, which is the accuracy quoted. And you can see the faces are within the spec. Again, the edges have a little bit of an issue. Another good test case is a billiard ball. They're very precisely made to two and a quarter inches. This is the scan of the pool ball, cue ball, that's uh, two and a quarter inches. And you can see the scan data here. It missed the data at the bottom because it just wasn't a view of it on the turntable. And if we align it to the CAD model, we check it here. See, it's within spec. This is a high precision step block that has a non reflective coating on it. Here's the 3D scan of the step block. I've got it aligned to the CAD model of the block. Turn the mesh off, you can see I've got the scale set for the tolerance to be plus or minus 0.3 millimeters, which is what the accuracy spec is. And you can see the sides are within that. The steps, though, have an issue that the uh, scanner had problems with the sharp edges. And you can see that if I turn on the mesh here. I have another step block that has larger steps because the scanner seemed to have problems with very small steps. This one's extremely shiny, so we're gonna have to put Magnaf Magnaflux on it. As you can see right now, Scanner is not getting any returns on the shiny surface. Now we've put Magnaflux on the bigger step block and we're going to start the scan. We're using markers. This is the 3D scan of the larger step block, so it's not as many edges. And it's also fit to the CAD model. And if I turn off the mesh, you can see that it's within the plus or minus 0.3 millimeter spec, except for just a little bit along the edges. So pretty decent. This is a bowling ball that I've attached targets to it. And I've also put a very light spray of Magnaflux on it because it was a black object. I was looking for an artifact that was larger so we could see if some of the um, targeting stitching is causing a leapfrog error. So this is a bowling ball, its diameter is supposedly eight and a half inches. And I used the turntable and the hand scanner to get the data. I fit it to a CAD model that's eight and a half inches but I'm not sure of the true dimension of this bowling ball. I don't have another way to measure it. If you look at the fit error, you can see that part of it's 
outside, just the top part of the fit is within the plus or minus three, then it gets larger. So again, I don't know if the actual bowling ball diameter is not correct or if it's a scanning error. Here's the figurine that I've had as a test case. I'm going to try using the feature page, feature scan on it. This scanner really excels at doing these sort of uh, lofted surfaces where precision isn't important, where there's no sharp edges. The scanner really excels at these sort of uh, artistic type scans. It does a very nice job. This uses the feature stitching instead of the targets. But it still does lose some of the detail if you look at the lines in the hair and the fingers on the hand and the eyes. I've got this Ryobi saw that I want to reverse engineer and I tried scanning it without the uh, targets and it doesn't do feature scanning doesn't work on it so I've placed targets on it but it's still too shiny so I'm going to put some Magnaflux on and then I'm going to have to clean off the reflectors. You can see I've put a light coat of Magnaflux on it. Now I just have to clear the targets off so that the camera can see them well. You have to move very slowly so you can track. Otherwise it will lose its position. Try to keep the distance so that the field of view is in the excellent. Oops, I just lost the tracking. So this is the scan I got. It tends to roll the edges over, smooth them out too much, or miss the edges. You can also see all the holes where the bolts go. You don't get any returns back. Because of the point grid resolution of 0.5 millimeters, the scans have missed all the detail of this locking mechanism. You can see that the scanner just missed all the detail here on the locking mechanism and it had a hard time coming in from the side. So what is my conclusion about the pop scanner? Well the accuracy is definitely in the uh, plus or minus 0.3 millimeter area for small objects on the turntable. The problem is that the, the grid spacing or the dot spacing is over a uh, half a millimeter so it's not really appropriate for doing a lot of things with sharp edges like um, reverse engineering. The good news is Revopoint has a, another Kickstarter for a POP2 sensor and they've done a bunch of things. They've increased the frame rate up to 10 frames per second. They are now saying that the uh, accuracy is up to a 0.1 millimeter and that they've got a, um, a 0.15 millimeter point distance versus the 0.5 that on the pop. This should help a little bit better more for doing reverse engineering. It also has a um, gyroscope built into it so that it, when you're freehanding it should be able to scan and connect the point clouds a little bit faster. Well if this has been helpful please hit like and subscribe and have a great day.